Each capsule will now get a neural network, and the further they can drive, the higher their fitness value will be. Then in the crossover function, the weight and bias values of the parents will be mixed, the new neural network then gets mutated, and it will be a member of the next generation. Let's see how this works out. Now that I implemented the neural network and I'm ready to use it, I can step up to a higher abstraction level and imagine the neural network like a blob like this, which gets some inputs on one side and provides some outputs on the other side. How exactly this feed-forward part works, I won't have to bother about that anymore. That's already done. What I do have to bother about is, first, how should I add the neural network to the capsules, which will handle the five input values and calculate the four output values over and over again? And second, how should I modify the genetic algorithm in order to train those neural networks, by which I mean modifying their weight and bias values? Let's start with the first issue and simply include a neural network in the smart cops class. The capsules are already moving based on four Boolean values which are bound to the RO keys, so handing the four output values of the neural network that won't require any huge change. The brain property will become a neural network instead of an array of random values, and in the makeMove method, the output values of that neural network will determine if an RO key needs to be pressed. I rewrite the first part of the conditions to this.brain.output values, and the key is pressed if that value is 1. If it's not 1, then it's minus 1. There are no other options. And in that case, if it's minus 1, then the key won't be pressed. So that's how the capsules will handle the output of their brains. And now, using this method, I don't need steps here. So I can delete this current step argument and this whole create steps method as well. And now the output half is done. It's time for the input half, which is setting the five input values and then calling the feed forward method that will happen in the game template where I iterate through the members of the capsule population. The capsule's brain doesn't have a length anymore because now it's a neural network and not an array. So I just write a constant number here 200 and then set input values, feed forward and make move. Those are all the steps I will need. Now here I would use the get sensor data method because that's the one that calculates the length of the five sensor lines. What's missing in that method is that it doesn't return with those values after calculating them. So in the smart cups class, I create a sensor values array. Then instead of this field text, I won't display the length values, but put them in that array. And at the end, I return with it. It will be an array with five elements. So I can use it as the set input values methods argument back in the game template here. And before I check how the capsules behave with their brand new brains, I delete this old neural network from here and the player capsule as well. No need for those anymore. And I need to make sure that in the population class, in the init method, the create steps won't be called because it doesn't exist anymore. And the return statement here in the get sensor data method that has to be right at the bottom. And now if I open the console and take a look at the canvas, here are the capsules moving based on the outputs of the neural networks. Two of them, these two, came really far. And yeah, those are the two that got picked at the end. Yeah, fair enough. Now if I click on the generation two button, it will stop. That's because the crossover and the mutation methods, they cannot work now the way they did before. So I need to change them to create the next generation. But not all of them are especially clever, but some lucky ones. This one is almost doing a full circle. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look hopeless. Now let's make the genetic algorithm great again and check out the crossover method first. What it does between creating a new brain and returning a new brain it's iterating through the new brain's elements and randomly picks its current element either from parent 1 or from parent 2. The probability is proportional to the parent's reward value. The higher the reward is, the higher the chances that the parent will be picked to copy the current element. The elements in this case will be the weights and the bias values. 
but the idea remains the same. Create a new neural network and start iterating through those values. First in the hidden layer, I go through perceptron by perceptron, and inside of every perceptron, through weight by weight, and picking one weight from a parent, another weight from a parent again, and so on. And finally, before hopping over to the next perceptron, I choose the value of the bias exactly the same way. And then I do the same with the perceptrons on the output layer. This is a lot of code, but there is nothing new here. The crossover mechanism is the same as before, just the iteration that takes more lines to implement. That's all. And after the crossover, I got the mutation. Here it replaces the value of each element in the brain array to a random value with the probability of the mutation rate. This mutation will also remain exactly the same, except that the random value will be a number between minus 1 and 1 instead. So I iterate through the perceptrons, inside of those perceptrons iterate through the weights, plus at the end the bias, first in the hidden layer, and when that's done, then I do all over again in the output layer. That's it for the mutation, then what would come after that, the create next generation method, which looks fine, and the replace next generation, I think I don't need to change that either. Let's just go and give it a try, see if I forgot something. Okay, I speed it up. So first the capsules started to move very similarly to each other, and my guess was that that's because the mutation rate is too low. In the population class, I set it from 1% to 5%, and this is the population on the screen now with 0.05 mutation rate. They got stuck first in this tricky part in the middle, until one of them ran into the exit of that section, and slowly became not necessarily dominant, but strong enough for other capsules to follow it. And it only took a few generations until the first capsule reached the last check line. And that's when everything stopped and got this error message. The issue is about the get reward method. In there, it checks the collision between the capsule itself and the next element of the check lines array. But after a full lap, the last element of the check lines array is reached. Like there are 20 check lines on the track and it was looking for the 21st. So instead of that, after reaching the last line, it should start over and check collision with the first check line again. So for the index, I should use modulo 20, or more generally, modulo check lines length. And if I want them to move a little longer, I set here in the game template this 200 to 300, and then I can start them again, speeding it up. And yeah, I don't know what to say now. The original goal, which was training a capsule to drive around the track, has been reached. There are many details that can be added to this and settings that can be changed. I might do one more video, which will be all about experimenting with some extra features and trying out some new ideas. Until that, I leave this screen on a little bit, so you can watch the development of the capsule's brains. And um, thanks for watching, code is on GitHub, see you next time.